Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. In the beginning is now, and ever shall, shall be, a world, world without, without end. end. Amen. light in this world be from Christ Jesus who watches over and protects us always and let that light shine on us today as we begin our celebration in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Lord bless us with the wisdom to praise you in spirit and in truth so that by following your holy will we may gain eternal salvation. My brothers and sisters let us call to mind our faults and failings this week and ask God to help us prepare ourselves that we may worthily participate in this holy sacrifice. And let us kneel together and pray. And let us remember this week as a penance to uh, look after those who are in need, and especially those who are sick, maybe even in our neighborhoods or at our home. Let us pray. I confess to Almighty God, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned through my own fault, in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done or failed to do. I ask the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And may our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me, I absolve you from all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray that we will make good use of the gifts that God has given us. Almighty God, our protector and our guide. Without you, nothing is holy, nothing has value. Guide us to everlasting life by helping us to use wisely the blessings you have given to the world. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, 
one God forever and ever. And let us be seated now for our scripture readings. The first reading, a reading from the first book of Kings. The Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream at night. God said, ask something of me and I will give it to you. Solomon answered, O Lord my God, you have made me your servant, king to succeed my father David, but I am a mere youth, not knowing at all how to act. I serve you in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a people so vast that it cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding heart to judge your people and to distinguish right from wrong. For who is able to govern this vast people of yours? The Lord was pleased that Solomon made this request. So God said to him, because you have asked for this, not for a long life for yourself, nor for riches, nor for the life of your enemies, but for understanding so that you may know what is right, I do as you requested. I give you a heart so wise and understanding that there has never been anyone like you up to now. And after you, there will come no one equal to you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Second reading, a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, we know that all things work for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, so that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those who he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand.
have revealed to little ones the mysteries of the kingdom. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure buried in a field which a person finds and hides again. And out of joy goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant searching for fine pearls. When he finds a pearl of great price, he goes and sells all that he has and buys it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net thrown into the sea, which collects fish of every kind. When it's full, they haul it ashore. Then they sit down to put what is good into buckets. What is bad, they throw away. Thus it will be at the end of the age. The angels will go out and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Do you understand all these things? They answered, yes. And he replied, then every scribe who has been instructed in the kingdom of heaven is like the head of a household who brings from his storeroom both the new and the old. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Hearts on fire, Holy Spirit, come inspire. You know, I have this little ritual I do every morning that the uh, paper is delivered at, in our driveway. I wait till Sharon goes off to work and then I run out to the driveway and hurry up and bring the paper in. And like probably most of us, there's always some part of the news that you'd like to see first in the morning. And my part is the signs from the stars, you know, what they call the zodiac, <laughs> which isn't really news, but it's something I've done for, over a long period of time. I figure it's always nice to know what the stars of the heaven are saying about our lives here on earth. Of course, my family thinks I'm very foolish because they said, you're not supposed to believe in that. That's not, none of that is really true. And they're probably correct because I noticed some mornings they just seems like they just switch them around do the, do the different signs. <laughs> but uh, the other morning I hurried and ran out to the driveway to get the paper and opened up the paper and it said something like, you're going to be offered a business venture today and that you can't refuse. It's going to change your whole life. <laughs> I thought, boy, this is interesting. Well, it didn't happen, but, <laughs> but it was an interesting thing. You know, when you think about God in our lives, you realize that the kingdom of heaven is not cheap. And today in the scripture it says it's like that treasure buried in a field or a pearl of great price. And it may require all that we have to buy it. Now that sounds like a very risky business adventure. When a man bets his whole life and all his savings on a business venture, 
we might call it bold or courageous. But if he hasn't made a careful estimate of all the risks and the returns that he's going to receive, then we would call him foolhardy. What do we risk when we risk everything on the Lord? That's kind of the question in the scriptures today. And what are the returns that we hope for? You see, our Lord makes it very clear all through the scriptures that we're to risk everything. There's no relationship, there's no personal possession, no moment of time, ability, or talent that are not all to be placed at the service of the Lord. Again and again, we hear in the scriptures that God makes it clear to us that this is not a limited partnership we enter into with him. No, with Jesus, we're invited to be in totally or be totally out. There can be no in-betweens. No in-betweens when we partner ourselves with the Lord. Now, who is this man, then, who invites us to a business partnership in which we must risk everything? Is he some kind of Bernie Madoff seeking to use us for his own advantage? No, that's not it at all. No, he is the king over all the earth, creator of the world. He's the way the truth, and the life. And the partnership to which he invites us is a share in his own life. He calls us to give our passing lives to him and promise us in exchange his gift of eternal life. He asks us for our weaknesses and he gives us his strength. He promises to take our miseries in exchange for his blessedness. Now that's what is being offered by God to King Solomon in that first reading in the book of Kings today. King Solomon was made the same offer. When offered whatever he desired in life, he chooses not the passing things like wealth or health or power, but instead he asks for God's own wisdom. Now he must have been already a very wise king to choose God himself over all the passing thing, gifts of the world. And Jesus' offer to us is the same. His offer is unlike any other offer that we'll ever receive in life. Not only does it offer infinite riches in place of all the finite ones that we have in life, but his offer strikes right at the core of our being, right at the core of who we really are, Now, we have many times probably said in our life, if only I had made this investment, or if I avoided those bad choices, maybe a bad purchase, just think how much better off I'd be right now. But nonetheless, we continue. We try to make good on the next offer. Well, we need to look at Jesus' offer. You see, he offers us heaven in exchange for earth. But if we reject his offer of eternal life, it doesn't mean that we'll retain our earthly life forever. You see, life in this world is going to come to its own end. And if we rejected heaven, we may be expecting that place we heard in the gospel today, the wailing and grinding of teeth. However, each of us is made for God. And to reject him is to reject the whole purpose of our being, our very life itself. What might we say then? Well, we could probably say like what, what I saw in the zodiac sign just the other day. Jesus is making us an offer we can't refuse. How then do we accept his gift? Our Lord tells us the answer to that in Matthew's gospel today. He said, out of joy... We go and sell all that we have to buy that field. Now, many a saint have done exactly that. By giving all that they had to the poor, they were able to purchase a closeness to God. 
maybe even heaven itself. And through their lives of prayer and fasting and service, they experienced heavenly life on earth. And in some ways, we're called to do the same thing in our lives. God cannot just be one of our many priorities of life. He must be the first priority. Why do we get up in the morning? Well, the answer is simple, to serve God. Why do we go to work? To praise God through the work of our hands. Why do we go and gather in the company of our friends and family? Well, we do it to rejoice in the goodness of the Lord and praise him for the many gifts and blessings he's given us with good friends and family. Everything we do can be offered to God for everything that has come from him. St. Paul tells us in the second reading to the Romans today the same thing. Only he says it in the opening lines. He says, we know that all things work for good for those who love God. Now listen to that. All things come to good for those who love God. The more deeply we love God and practice that love in our lives, the more we'll discover that the investment we've made with Jesus pays great dividends. Dividends not paid out only when they mature in eternal life, but even right now. Where here on earth, our time is made more rich, more full, more joyful, the more we dedicate ourselves and our lives to Christ Jesus. Let us stand together and profess our faith in our love for Jesus the Son. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and of his kingdom there will be no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Gathered together in Christ's love for us. As brothers and sisters on this earth, let us call to mind God's many blessings to us today and ask him to hear and answer all our prayers as we respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that we may realize the treasure of God's presence buried in each person we meet and live our lives in the joy of that knowledge, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For political leaders, that they may govern the vast and diverse people in their care with wise and understanding hearts, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those facing or recovering from droughts or floods, from violent weather or rising sea levels, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an awareness of the preciousness of life from conception to natural death, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that we might grow in wisdom and understanding and use these gifts to continue building up the kingdom of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts, for all our intentions, spoken and unspoken, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
and for all the sick and infirmed, both in hospitals and at home. We especially remember today Tommy Wainwright, for whom this Mass is being offered. May he be sustained by the love of God and may gain strength through God's help. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, hear the prayers of your people today. Give us what you've inspired us to ask for in faith, for we ask every gift in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Glory be be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Pray, my family, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the benefit of his holy church. Lord, receive these offerings chosen from the many gifts you've given us. May these mysteries make us holy and lead us to eternal joy. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. All powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks. In you we live and move and have our being. Each day you show us a Father's love, your Holy Spirit dwelling within us, which gives us on earth the hope of unending joy. Your gift of the Spirit who raised Jesus from the dead is the foretaste and promise of the Paschal Feast of Heaven. With thankful praise in the company of the angels, we glorify the wonders of your power as we sing. Holy, 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 Lord God of Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Today we will pray together Eucharistic prayer number two, the canon of St. Hippolytus. We give thanks to you, God our Father, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, whom in these last days you have sent us as Savior, Redeemer, and Messenger of your will. 
He is your word, inseparable from you. Through him you have made all things, and in him you were well pleased. You sent him from heaven to a virgin's womb. There he dwelt and was made flesh. He was revealed as your son, born through the Holy Spirit and of the virgin. When he suffered, he fulfilled your will and gained for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands to free from suffering those who believed in you. When he was betrayed to his freely chosen suffering, thereby to destroy death, to break the chains of darkness, to crush hell beneath his feet, to give light to the just, to make a covenant and to manifest his resurrection, he took bread, he gave you thanks and said, take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. In like manner, he took the cup and said, this is my blood, which is poured out for you. Whenever you do this, do it in memory of me. you to send your Holy Spirit upon the offering of your Holy Church, to gather all in unity, grant to all who partake of these holy mysteries the fullness of the Holy Spirit for the strengthening of their faith in the truth. So may we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him may glory and honor be yours with the Holy Spirit in your holy church now and forever and ever. stand together as one family in faith, and with confidence let us pray in the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin, and protect us from all anxiety, as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. The cup of blessing which we bless is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. May the union of divinity and humanity in Jesus Christ bring us sanctification and eternal life. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And now let us offer each other some sign 
of Christ's love and peace to us. Peace be with everyone. Thanks. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. And let us pray together our prayer for spiritual communion. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free me from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your teaching and never let me be parted from you. I will take up the bread of heaven and call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring us to everlasting life. Amen. May the blood of Christ bring us to everlasting life. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called now to the table of the Lord. The body of Christ. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord, my soul, and remember all his kindness. Let us pray. Lord, we receive the sacrament which celebrates the memory of the death and resurrection of Christ, your son. May this gift bring us closer to our eternal salvation. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended. Let us go now in love to serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks. be to God. Your 
Shine.